the regulations state that in an emergency, the pilot may deviate from any rule to the extent required to meet that emergency. The FAA may ask for a written report about your bending the rules, but if they don't ask, no report is required. If on takeoff roll, the engine doesn't sound right or the airplane feels strange, don't hesitate. Reduce the power and abort the takeoff. Taxi back and have the airplane checked to your satisfaction. If you have an engine failure immediately after takeoff, don't attempt to turn back to the runway. Statistics show you probably won't make it. Of course, a lot depends on your altitude. Your chances of making a 180 degree turn with a dead engine while in a climbing attitude at a slow airspeed are not good. Instead, get the nose down quickly, maintain flying speed, and make the best landing you can under the circumstances. If you are under 200 feet, keep turns shallow and to a minimum. If you have partial power failure on takeoff, fly straight ahead and try to gain some altitude. Keep all turns shallow and gradually turn back to the airport. Once back in the airport pattern, keep the power on until you are sure you can land normally. Instruction in forced landings away from the airport is required as part of your pre-solo training. Your instructor will simulate engine failures at cruise altitude. As always, your first concern should be to fly the airplane and establish the best glide speed. After you've done this, look for a suitable landing field. To pick the best landing site, you need to know the wind direction. This is not the time to figure out wind direction. You should always know its direction. The goal of any forced landing is to complete a safe landing in the largest and best field available. You want to touch down in a normal landing attitude with the airplane under control. If you are above a thousand feet, first trim the airplane for best gliding airspeed. Flying the airplane is always your number one priority. Select a landing site and spiral down over it. Set up to enter on a downwind leg for a normal pattern just as you would at your home airport. If below a thousand feet, trim for best glide speed and select a field for a normal approach if possible. In any emergency, while still maintaining aircraft control, perform the emergency procedures checklist for your airplane. See if you can identify what caused the engine problem and correct it. Failure to follow the emergency procedures checklist which usually includes switching fuel tanks, has resulted in more than one embarrassed pilot having an off-airport landing due to fuel starvation, only to find fuel in the other tank after landing. Here's the emergency checklist for the Skyhawk. First, establish best glide speed of 65 knots. Next, check that the fuel shutoff valve is on. Set the fuel selector valve on both. Turn the auxiliary fuel pump on. Mixture to rich if restart has not occurred. Ignition switch to both or start if the propeller is stopped. If power is not restored, prepare for a power off landing. Seat backs most upright. Seats and seat belts secure. Mixture idle cut off. Fuel shut off valve off. Ignition off. Flaps is required with full flaps recommended. Airspeed 60 knots with the flaps down. Master switch off when landing is assured and unlatch the doors prior to touchdown. Once you select a field, try and stick with it. Avoid last minute changes when you are low and slow. Again, approach as nearly as possible, just as you would in your home airport traffic pattern. Use a normal glide to arrive at the key position on base leg. If you're too high, you can vary your turn to final so you don't overshoot. Use flaps and slips with care. Being slightly too high can be corrected, but there is no correction for being too low with an engine problem. A cardinal rule is never try to stretch a glide. It not only doesn't help, it actually works against you. When you pitch the nose too high, the increased drag causes a steeper descent. The simulated forced landing should be discontinued when it's apparent you can make the field. As a rule, forced landings are not practiced solo. 